Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, December 27th. We're almost at the end of 2020, and I know you guys are all looking forward to a new year. I sure am. Hope you all had a wonderful Christmas. Uh, got to spend time with friends and family and all that good stuff. I'll be talking a bit about Christmas and, and some things along the way, uh, but I, I want to get the the formalities out of the way here because I really want to have a pipe. So I'm going to be smoking my Hercules uh, 7LE second. Uh, I really need to clean that stem. It's pretty oxidized. But uh, this one is the one that had that little leak occurring on the side. I've uh, rimmed it out, put metal tubing in it. It's smoking beautifully and I'm going to smoke it today. I really, uh, you know, people worry about the pipe gurgling after you put the metal tubing in. But if you do it right, you maintain the airway, and that's really important. You have to make sure that you've got the same size airway after you put the tube in. Um, it's fine. It, it's never been a problem for me. And in this pipe, I am going to be smoking the very last bowl of my 2019 blend. <clears throat> if you can remember all the way back to uh, the beginning of 2020, I have this blend that's composed of everything that I smoked in 2019, one bowl's worth, only the things I like and I'll try to find that video and put a link to it in the description or in a card or something uh, in case you're interested in knowing what's actually in here I'm not because this is the last bowl of it I will ever be able to smoke but I've got a similar blend from 2020 that I'll be uh, opening up the first Sunday after New Year so so just, the first is on a Friday and we're gonna have Cane Rod Pipes uh, live we're gonna do the virtual pipe club that night and just sort of reminisce about the year and what we're gonna be doing in the year ahead so that's January 1st so yeah January 3rd is when I'll open up my 2020 blend and try that for the first time on Sunday morning with you so today we finish up 2019 next Sunday we start off 2020 blend and you know as always oh you know what that's okay because when oh, no, I already did that as always I, I miscalculated so I'm gonna have a little okay this isn't exactly the last bowl but there's not enough in there to make a bowl so I'll just add it to something else later and I've already added a bowl's worth of this to start off the 2020 blend I'll talk more about how I do that all next Sunday. This Sunday, it's just about enjoying it. And I got a new lighter for Christmas. My wife bought me that. Isn't that beautiful? And uh, I, I really believe that quite... Uh, I hope that's the right... Oh, you can't read it that way, can you? There we go. Um, I have many friends, uh, friends in the YTPC and otherwise... Uh, and family members as well that uh, are currently or were uh, police officers and I strongly support our police and I'm very proud to, to have a lighter like this. And I'm very proud to have a wife that was kind enough to buy it for me. And I wish I had a tamper. So, well, let's let's actually start with Christmas Eve. We had a big storm move through here on Christmas Eve, big one. Uh, it it was a uh, sorry, <laughs> it was a very strange couple of days because I think on Wednesday I may get the days wrong. You don't care. On Wednesday it was like frigid, and then on Thursday it was sixty degrees, and Thursday was Christmas Eve. But we got this big rainstorm that came through with high winds and all that. And we lost a big branch. I found on Christmas morning a big branch had fallen out of one of our oak trees. I'll put a picture uh, that I took this morning of, of that branch. And uh, if you're looking at the picture, you can see, first off, my dog Thatcher is probably in there somewhere. Thatcher is a 60-pound dog, so that gives you some idea of how large this branch is. Uh, it, was, it was about maybe three inches in diameter. And it stuck straight into the ground. It was sticking straight up. Uh, frost heaves because, so it was 60 on Thursday. It was 55 on Friday. Saturday, it was it was 22. 
So the frost heave has, has pushed it up a bit and it's tipped over, but it's still embedded in the ground. It's amazing how much force that thing must have hit with, with in order to go that deep into the ground. So later today, I get to fire up my chainsaw and uh, deal with that. But that's okay. That's just part of life. I got to do it today because the way our barrow works. So we can, we can pile that kind of stuff up in the street. And usually after a big storm, they'll come around. But because of the holidays and the weekends, they haven't done it yet. They're probably going to be out there bright and early on Monday morning. And if I don't get it out there today, then I'm going to have to deal with it myself. And I don't want to have to get it hauled away. I want to get one of those... Um, those fire pits, I, I know uh, our friend Couch has one, that uh, they, they just look like, I don't know, like aluminum pots really, and uh, they're designed so that you get really nice airflow below, and they apparently burn very hot. Uh, I, I know that I'm not going to be able to sit out in my yard in December and, you know, be comfortable, but at least I can use it to get rid of some of that kind of stuff, and, uh, you know, maybe some fall evenings and could enjoy it. Maybe early spring. We are allowed to burn uh, leaves and even trash here. Uh, but there's only one person that does it, and he's universally hated by all the neighbors. So I don't want to join him. Mm, this is very, very nice stuff. Uh, it was a pretty Virginia heavy year, 2019. Still plenty of burly to balance it out, though. So what else can I tell you about Christmas? I showed you my wife loved me. Loves me still. <laughs> uh, oh, my wife decorated, and uh, she, she decided we needed new lights for the tree this year. We have an artificial tree, um, and we usually don't put it up until just a few days before Christmas because we don't get to it. And uh, so I was putting it up one, I don't know, maybe Tuesday, and then she started decorating. She bought, she wanted white LEDs. She bought 600 white LEDs. And to her credit, she only got 400 on the tree. She ran out of room. <laughs> So I'll put a picture in here of the uh, the tree. Uh, I mean, it's pretty, but I honestly think you might notice I'm, I'm I'm getting a bit of a tan from sitting too close to it. And I'm not kidding. You can turn off all the lights and you can read by this tree. <laughs> That's how bright it is. <laughs> but it's pretty, and she likes it, and, and you know, so that that's part of Christmas too. Black coffee, by the way. I switched back to black. I uh, and I, I just kind of weaned myself off the creamer. I was I was always using uh, powdered creamer, and, and I've been dieting uh, since Thanksgiving. And actually, it's been working quite well. I've, I've lost uh, close to fifteen pounds since Thanksgiving, so I'm pretty happy about that. You know, nice, slow, steady progress. Uh, but one of the things that I realized as I started looking into what foods I was eating and what might, you know, what might I need to cut out, you know, there's an awful lot of calories in that, in that creamer. And it was only in there to, because I had this, uh, acidy stomach sort of issue when I drank black coffee. So I weaned myself to the point where I was just putting it in the first cup every day. And that seemed just fine. I didn't have any, any problem, any stomach problems or anything. The other thing that I started doing as part of this whole dieting thing is uh, I started eating breakfast, which you know sounds weird, but it turns out you, there, there's a lot of reasons you want to eat breakfast in the, in the morning, even if you're not hungry. Uh, it, it helps you later in the day. So I started doing that as part of this program I'm on, and that combined with the coffee seems to have helped a lot, and I've gotten creamer completely out of my life 
And the truth is, I like the black coffee. I always have. I only put the creamer in because it seemed to smooth things out for me. Boy, that was a lot more information than you wanted about my coffee, wasn't it? Anyway. Uh, so, yeah, that was that was Christmas. It was nice, quiet. My wife also bought for me the entire Perry Mason series, the, the original Raymond Burr, all 271 or two episodes on DVD, um, uncut, unedited, because the ones that they show on TV now are actually chopped up quite a bit to, to fit in the modern commercial lengths. They were originally filmed for a one hour block with, I think, Oh, I don't remember, but there were there was like let's just say ten minutes of commercials in that one hour, and now in one hour we get like twenty six minutes of commercials. So they had to cut a lot of stuff out uh, to fit it on modern television. So uh, this is the first time I'm going to be able to watch them in their unedited version, and I'm really excited about that. Of course, it's going to take me the better part of a year to get through it. But I'm a, I'm a big fan of uh, Raymond Burr and Perry Mason. Uh, it's a great show. If, you, if you've never seen the original Raymond... Well, it's not the original. There were movies before. But the series, uh, Raymond Burr... Uh, I always forget the other folks' names. It's, it's Raymond Burr. It's William Hopper. How could I forget the woman that played Della Street? Anyway, it's, it's great, great TV. Uh, you know, classic television. And really... Good stuff. It's it's sort of like what I wish Law and Order could have been. Uh, and Law and Order was a great show, but Perry Mason was better. Ah, uh, well, other than that, um, I gave my wife some stuff. You know, uh, we, you know, it's it's crazy. We we buy stuff all year round, and, and you know, the idea that we're gonna pick out things that we really want is just kind of silly. You know, this was nice. This was. This is a sort of Christmas gift that's just perfect. I don't need this. I, I don't really, you know, I'm not going to die if I have one less Zippo lighter. Um, so it wasn't, it wasn't a necessity, but it certainly was something that I, that I would have wanted and, and that I really will enjoy. So this, this is a perfect idea for, for a Christmas gift, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, my wife did a really nice job with it. The other thing I've been doing, uh, you saw I put a post up, and I, I put this stuff on Instagram quite a bit, is I've been sorting through fly tying material. So I, I got through all the stuff that my friends uh, Brian Quilty and Jack Kurtz were kind enough to, to give to me. And there's some fantastic stuff in there, really, really great materials. And I uh, got those all sorted out. But... I always do this. It, they they were in perfect condition, and there was absolutely no evidence that there were any critters in the in the material. But I don't care. Even when I buy it from a uh, reputable, uh, I shouldn't say reputable. If I if I buy it from a company and it's sealed in plastic, I still open it up, put it in a container with mothballs. Sometimes I'll even use some borax, uh, depending on what the material is and leave it for two weeks because I had a long time ago I had brought some material in to my collection from someone else it had a carpet beetle infestation and I lost a lot of material because of that so I'm just overly cautious about it so all those materials are in quarantine right now so I decided well heck I'm I'm on the way let's start sorting through all the other fly tying material uh, that might have been a bit of a mistake So I have four, four or five boxes right now. And these are these large, I think they're 76 quart Sterilite containers. Um, I got one here that I can show you. Just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So that's actually the quarantine container. <laughs> So that's, that's not counting, counted. I've got four other containers like that. One has just vices in it, vices and vice accessories. 
The other one is sort of tools, hooks, miscellaneous things like thread, you know, that, that kind of stuff. And then there's one that's just feathers and one that's just fur. So that's a lot of material. And I decided to sort through it, um, catalog it, because, you know, you, you got a bin like that and you want to know, do I have any emu feathers? Turns out I don't. Well, unless there's some in the in that quarantine bin that I haven't cataloged yet. But uh, yeah, I, so I can sit there and dig through a bit, but I've got a spreadsheet now. And I, it's not detailed to the point, like, you know, with tying thread, I probably have over 100 spools of tying thread. I don't need to know that I have two spools of black 6-0 tying thread. I just need to know where the tying thread is. You know, I'll find what I need in, in there. So that that's the way I'm kind of cataloging it. So not, not minute detail, but just sort of broad stroke. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it's been an interesting experience because as you guys know, I, I said I haven't tied flies in five years. Uh, over five years and the reason was that uh, when I was on chemotherapy I just I basically lost the ability to do it I couldn't see very well the chemotherapy induced cataracts that I ultimately got fixed my hands were not um, yeah, I lost feeling in my fingers I lost my fingernails in some cases uh, yeah, they, they were pretty bad and it, it really just wouldn't have been possible for me to tie flies so I set it aside and then you know it took me a while to kind of get back to feeling like I could do it again uh, got the cataracts taken care of, my fingers are working well, and the other day, I, well, last week, I pulled it out and I did that pheasant tail nymph video. That was the first time in five years. So I've got this new excitement about it, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to doing more and doing more videos on it, but just tying for myself and uh, just enjoy it. You know, it's, it's a great relaxing pastime, kind of like smoking a pipe. And you can actually smoke a pipe while you tie flies if you got the right pipe. And if you're a clincher so yeah that that's been occupying a lot of my time while I'm on vacation I have a pipe job going it's a really interesting pipe with some historical value and I'm, I'm doing a, a video series on it but I'm waiting because uh, I need a piece of acrylic a very specific color acrylic that has to come in and it hasn't arrived yet and I'm sort of stuck until that arrives and boy the the US Postal Service is a mess right now you know I, I sent something to uh, it doesn't matter who I sent it to but but they're not they're halfway across the country and I don't think they've gotten it yet and that was probably almost two weeks ago and I sent it. I just sent it first class mail. I shouldn't have done that. Should have. Should have done priority. But oh well. John, if you don't get your tobacco, I'll send more. I'm talking to my my friend. Uh, hmm, lots of smoke here. <laughs> my friend John, who is uh, all briared up. Um, Go check out Old Briar Up. He's got a great channel. And I think he's in the midst of a 100 sub giveaway right now. So uh, definitely want to check him out. I'll put a link down below. It's funny. I will miss this this blend. I, I had to ration it out. So it was in a bigger jar. And I smoked it down. And then I transferred it into this, this smaller jar. But it was probably about twice this uh, volume. And I rationed it out over the, the year. I probably had between one or two one to two balls a month. Probably smoked more of it in the colder months. Um, not for any real reason, it just didn't seem like a good summertime blend. It's a bit heavy. It's, uh, you know, there's a lot of things in here like, um, there's some old gallery. Uh, what's the other one? There's some heavy Virginia, Virginia Burley type blends in here. It's a very meat and potatoes sort of experience. But uh, 
yeah, I'll, I'll be sad to see it go because I kind of would look forward to it. You know, I'd I'd see the jar sitting there and I'd say, yeah, tomorrow night I'm going to have a bowl of that. And kind of became a little event. You got to have little events in your life. Well, folks, I've talked more than enough. Uh, and I got to get up and get the darn, uh, the darn branch cut up. So you all take care. Have a great day. Uh, have, a, have a nice Sunday. Fantastic week ahead. Uh, I'll, I'll see you on January 1st, Friday, for our uh, Canrod Pipes uh, Virtual Pipe Club, 8 p.m. Eastern. And I'll see you next Sunday. And I probably am not going to do anything on Wednesday, just because I'm, I'm on vacation. So great week. Happy New Year. Uh, all the best wishes for you in the new year. And I will see you shortly after. And we'll continue our uh, our virtual friendship and our love of pipes. Y'all take care now. Until we talk again, I look forward to speaking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.